G'day, it's Chris Bowen from Bowen's Garage. It's Sunday, March 22, and it's about 2.30 in the afternoon. Now, this clearly is a Renault, and it's also a SUV. We have been living with this car since mid-January, and will continue to do so until the very end of April. Why would we do that? Because, you know, you get to pick up on little things you may not have during your traditional one week re review which is what most of us do this has got a 1.5 turbocharged four cylinder with 117 kilowatts of power and funnily enough this car is based on the nissan cash car and it's actually a better performer that engine comes from mercedes-benz and it also has a different transmission double clutch seven speed transmission so in terms of the engine and uh, performance and the way it pairs with the transmission, it's already got extra points in my mind. Now, as I said, living with it. This uh, middle of the range Kajar presents itself fairly well. It's not too bad. Don't you love that little hood? It's like a little beret over the top of the instrument cluster, which is fully digital, as you can see. I love a digital speedo. Over here we've got uh, Renault's infotainment system and as you can see it's plagued by fingerprints which is not uncommon uh, for any of these systems. But Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, it's all there. Look, I'm sorry Alison at Renault. Um, I've mentioned some of the quirks of the Kajar in the past such as, such as where the uh, volume controls and source selectors are behind the steering wheel you can't really see it but yes you do get used to it with muscle memory which is a good thing and this particular model comes with cloth seats first thing that caught my eye aside from the fact that no one's cleaned this car for about two and a half months is the fact that there's rear vents well done so there's no need for the nissan cash car not to have rear vents this does on the cash car uh, there's just a blank box there. They just didn't bother to put it in. Nothing. Um, two USB ports again. Map pockets. Map pockets in both seats. And just crumbs and crap that my son has left behind over time. But that's what it's all about in an SUV. Putting up with the rigors of life when it comes to having a family. Uh, pretty good boot. About 440 litres, I believe. But the best thing is these fold down functions so you don't have to stuff around with buttons on the side of those back seats and then you've got a fairly flat surface to um, go and buy something that would normally require I don't know a ute interestingly you don't get a auto dimming mirror unless you option the sunroof which this doesn't have so for some reason those two things go hand in hand Let's just get on to the fuel economy figure. 5.9 litres per 100. Now I'll tell you how this car's driven every day of its life. It goes into the city and then it comes back. So 120k journey. That's good. That figure prompts me to say that why would you go out and buy an EV which costs a shitload more than this? We could have a perfectly efficient petrol engine and the SUV feel uh, feel that you like. I, I just don't understand it. Renault have increased the size of their diamond grill. It's quite an attractive front end, but the more and more you look at it, you can see how it's very much related to the Nissan Qashqai. All right, we'll keep you updated during the course of the next month or so. Isn't life great at the moment? Just fantastic. I mean, you just can't write this sort of stuff. Well, they have, it was called Contagion. Bye.